a show that tackles the big issues affecting the BVI and the rest of the Caribbean. Searches for answers to today's big questions and gives viewers a unique perspective on developing stories. Follow the big story with me, Kathy Richards, only on JTV. This show is brought to you by the National Bank of the Virgin Islands, Cyril B. Romney Tertola Pier Park, Envy Salon Spa Nail and Barbershop, the Wellness Center, Medical and Behavioral Health Clinics, Tissily Cross Deliciously Smooth Cider, HOV Medical and Digicel, Simply More Speed, Reliability and Entertainment. This is The Big Story. I'm Kathy Ridges. I want to thank you so much for joining us for this edition. Guess by now that you know that Monday, March 6th, is a national holiday. And I can see you jumping up and feeling all good, uh, knowing that no work, especially for the public servants and some of you who are in other sectors. Yeah, you got to go to work. But don't jump up too heavy because we got to celebrate in accordance with the day. Christmas time, you celebrate Christmassy. So each Lavity Stout Day, you celebrate it each Lavity Stout Way. <laughs> to talk to us about the, uh, how are we going to spend this day, Monday, March 6th, uh, uh, Miss Carolyn Stout Igwe. And we have Beverly Hodgsmith. I love to say Beverly, it's my mom's name, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, nice ladies, meet. to the studio. Thank, Thank you, you, Kathy, for having us. Awesome. So, Holidays coming around. We want to have a true holiday, but we want to have it celebrated in the way uh, for the cause of which we have it. Tell us about what's going to be happening on March 6th. So this year, we are starting on March 5th. We have a two-day celebration this year, okay. rather than combine everything in one because we're doing the, cer the, cer the celebration on the day differently. So on Sunday, H.L. Stout was a former Methodist minister, preacher, local preacher. So we are going back to his church at Zion Hill Methodist Church. The, the focus of the service will be on him. We have a special commemorative choir that has been put together for this year's celebration. They will be ministering on Sunday and we will have participation in the service by the premier, the leader of the, the opposition. Then after the service, we are going to do the annual lane ceremony at the Capone Space Cemetery. On Monday, which is a grand day, a grand day holiday, <laughs> <laughs> we are having a theatrical production. This year, we are doing things differently. Not the usual ceremony with all the speeches. We are going to be having a production. We have a special skit called Countryman Comes to Town. The theme for this year's celebration is Countryman Comes to Town, Keep the Vision Moving. Anyone who knows H. L. Stout knows that he constantly quoted Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, where there's no vision, the people perish. Mm -hmm. People think it's his words, but it was the words of the Solomon, of the wise King Solomon. So we are going to be having a skit, and it's going to be interspersed with musical renditions, singing, poetry, and some dance. Mm. And it's going to be good if you have, it's, it's a free, you have an opportunity to see some of the territory's top actors for free. So come on out and join us on Monday. It starts at 10 a.m. at HLSCC. Wow, high day, right? High day. Mm -hmm. You sleep a little bit late, you come, you join us, 
And thereafter, you're going to go home and enjoy the rest of the day. We are hoping to be able to do some recollection of his, um, one thing in particular we want to be able to bring back is the, the day he died, not the day he died, the day of his funeral. Mm -hmm. We haven't played that for the average person on the BVI, probably has not seen the funeral service. We want to be able to recall that on that day. That's how many years ago? 1995. Mm -hmm. So we're almost approaching how many years now? 28. Yeah, so in the next couple of years, it'll be 30 years since he died. Oh, me? So, yeah. Mm. He died on Mother's Day and he was buried a couple of weeks later mm. in 1995. Okay, you remember the years uh, very well because you were very, very close to him. part of it. I worked with him from 19, um, actually with him from when he came back in 1986 as um, chief minister until his death. Mm. Your best recollections of H. Laverty Stone, mm. the man? The man. What a man he was. <laughs> what a great leader he was. And I've said it and I say it all over. Uh, I'll say it again, one of the best leaders this country has ever seen. H.L. Stout, a man, a human man, human being, a caring man, a man with a lot of love for country and for people, a man with a courageous man, a man who is not afraid to take the giant leap, a man who is not afraid to step back when he was proven wrong, a man who surrounded himself with people, people who could help him get the vision moving. And that he did a lot of that. He was able to bring people on board that who were not ordinarily on board with him in the beginning. He had that, that kind of knack, we would say, to do that. That was the man, the man who really um, proved himself. You know, um, when he, um, he was a thinker, he used to have what we call the little black book. Mm -hmm. And when he go home in the night, you know, he jot his notes down. So by the time he opened his eyes and he knew you were at work. And I used to tell people, when Laverty got to by um, Slaney, by Iris' house, because mm -hmm. at that time we had a, a phone in the car. Okay. Um, and it could, only, it could only be used in that area. You couldn't use, <laughs> you couldn't use it from Langley. So when he got there, he called you, tell Brother Louis Potter, I want so and so done. Tell Sister Lorne, I want so and so done. And by the time he reached to the building, not even to his office, he already moved off those topics because they better have the information there. And he moved on to the next one. When he, when he projected, he, pro he didn't project for just two days. He projected for the future. That's what you call good leadership. Now, what, what were some of those qualities that you would have seen in him that you would love to see now? All, of, the, all of those things, oh. the courage, the, the, the whole thing of putting people first. And it doesn't matter um, whether you support this party or that party. And that's another thing that he had. Love he didn't care. Once election was over, that was it. Everybody had to come together as one to get the country going. And he didn't spend time with Mrs. a, 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 a NDP, so she can't work here. He, he, no, he wanted none of that. He draw people to him. He used to have the same saying, one enemy is one too much. Mm. He used to try to bring people on board with him. I have witnessed people come to his office and swear heavy words, and I am so ashamed and appalled. But this is the chief minister, how can you come and disrespect his office? But by the time they left that office, you won't believe it's the same person who came in through that door. Mm. You know, those, those, those things, I mean, they don't come, you, you have to develop that kind of humanness in you to be able to deal with situations like that. Should I dare say that's that that's a, a great quality of, of the Pisces? <laughs> you are a Pisces. Oh yes, I am. Okay, so you're taking some credit. Okay. Yeah, but that was him. I'm not telling you he was born like he had his time. Uh, I remember. I always I think back on certain things with him. I remember one time he told me not to set up any meeting between this and that time, and you know I need to get out of here. And I not intentionally i did set up a meeting that infringed i didn't think it would infringe on the time mm -hmm. and he was so furious but at the same time while he was furious he didn't get overly overboard and chastising you you know he still kind of 
pacified. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. to work with us. I can't hit it to head kind of way. But um, yeah, he. I'm just showing that other side because I, I don't want to portray him as um, he was a saint. He wasn't, you know. Mm. But he had good qualities. At the end of every year, that man used to call me and say, Beverly, I want to thank you for all that you have done for me for the year. How often do we get a common thank you? People look for money, but for me, that said a whole lot, that my contribution was worth it. And that was something he would have done to almost everyone that worked with him. Um, well, I, I can't speak for others, but he certainly would have done it. I know the poem second so and all that would have gotten it. The people who worked directly close with him, it wouldn't have trickled down maybe to the lower side, but those who walked directly had to take night make day, as they would say, because I, I was saying the equity that I say in those days, we didn't have the computer. We had typewriter. Mm -hmm. So every week this man used to say, Luna, I want to make a broadcast. <laughs> okay? So you had to have these speeches ready all the time. And if he didn't like that, you know, you have to go and correct that. You have to type it over. But you have to start from scratch because there were yes. no computers. And he said, but how did we manage? But we managed. Mm -hmm. We managed, you know. And that's another thing I admire about him. When, when, when the voice of the government was heard, it was one voice. It was the chief minister. So you didn't have the minister for communication or the minister for that, like you all over the place and I'm saying one thing, you saying another thing. When the um, whole idea of country, progress for country and all that, it was his voice that would be there so you would chastise him. When it was necessary to use the other ministers, he did that. But he led, he, was, he, he, he led, he was able to lead. You know, I remember him saying to me at one time when we go to, to, and I'm not going to call any minister's name, and we go to Exco at the time it was called, and um, you have to chastise the governor and anything. I would say my part, and then when I'm finished with my part, I kick the other minister that I want to see his part under the table. And they didn't plan it before, but he was able to come in and interject right on the same topic and well. Awesome. You know, so that had to come from the kind of leadership skills that he demonstrated. Okay. And some of these is what we're going to be seeing. We're going to be seeing uh, in the skit. Well, the skit is going to be a depiction of Levity's journey from boyhood to his political career. Mm. And there's some significance in the topic, in the theme. Mm. Countryman comes to town. We are trying to portray a section of our history when there was country versus town. Oh, so there was? There, there was. was. So you, have, you have to come. I'm not going to give you any more information. For those persons who don't know about that era in our history, I'm inviting you to come. Come and let's, let's get a glimpse into that aspect of our history. So it's going to be history with a twist. Of course, you know you have to put a little drama in it, but definitely some of the things that were said at that time, we are going to be bringing out on Monday. Okay, so you can't leave me in that total suspense on, from now until Monday. Mm -hmm. Where was country and where was town? So town is in Rotong, the persons okay. who lived in around Rotong area. So anything outside of that was country. Oh. So that's why I like to say that I think it was by divine appointment that the first three ministers of government who were appointed in 1967 when we had the first minister, ministers of government after the new constitution, Three of them came from the country. Mm. Ivan Dawson from Ballas Bay, Terence Letson from Long Look, H. Lafferty Stout from Long Bay. None, no one from Tong were among the first ministers of government. Mm. I believe it was divine appointment to set the tone that it is time to take a new leaf, turn a new leaf in the BVI. All right? Are you saying something to me, um, uh, Carolyn? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> But we are going to be <laughs> depicting some, some aspects, some highlights in his life. And we have some actors who are gearing up and ready to come to show that aspect of our history. And we have some, we have the young, we have some students, persons in the community coming to bring it all together in this grand theme. Theatrical. 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 Theatrical production <laughs> on Monday. Mm, okay. Um, it's key that we, we try to get our younger people to have these experiences, to learn yes. a, a bit of the history of the territory in these forms, as well as right. other forms. But 
key to, to the success of what you would have been doing, the entire cast has been put in is to ensure that knowledge is passed on right. to the younger right. generation. Right. So I'm betting that you're trying to, as much as possible, call out the young people to this event. Yes, so we are really, we've appealed to the schools, we've invited the schools, so we'll have participation from them. But we really want to encourage parents, as you come in, don't leave the children at home. Bring the children out because they need to ha have a greater appreciation for who we are as a people and where we've come from. So we do have young levity rising to the older levity being depicted in the skit. And that's all I'm going to say about the skit. <laughs> all I'm going to say, it's going to be action-packed, and it's going to end on a high note. But I'm not giving you any more information, Kathy. You need to come and everyone out there come so that you can be a part of this grand production. We awesome. want to do things a little bit different. <laughs> right. You know, you don't want to have the same ceremony. Yeah. Over the years, the committee, which was previously chaired by Mrs. Parsons, you know, they tried to come up with different things. And it's sometimes, sometimes they thought, well, can we do something different? Mm -hmm. But we, there are a lot of, there's still a lot of ideas out there we can tap into. And there are different aspects of his life. So they've done a lot of good work in the past in trying to celebrate the event, but we're just trying to do something differently. So that's why we, we've separated the Reed Lane from the actual production, because the Reed Lane would usually take place at the cemetery, of course, yeah. but we wanted to do something different. So we're gonna get that out of the way. And on Sunday, and I should have said, I forgot poetry. How do I continue to forget poetry? We do have a premier who is a poet, mm -hmm. and we do have a poet laureate in the person of Dr. Georges. Mm -hmm. That's as much as I'm going to tell you as to who's participating. Get him some out of shit. No. <laughs> Mouth close up so that's so we don't <laughs> You were about to, to No, I just wanted to say um, encouraging the young people to come out would do um, great homage to, to HL because he was a man who loved the young people, who loved the development of his young people, and as I've said over and over again, one of his greatest... Um, attributes to this country was the development of education. We had the secondary school, the expansion of the secondary school. We had him getting his kids off to University of the West Indies in Barbados without having to do the A-levels. And I need not say the H level, the South Community, Community College, the amount of um, negative negativity he had when he was trying to build that college. and we now see that he was on the right course. Where there's no vision, the people surely will perish. Okay, well, uh, Carlin has had mouth shut, so not more can jump out. So <laughs> we will shut up our mouth there. Uh, and just encourage you to make sure that you take some time out for, on Monday, the 6th from 10 a.m. at the H. Laverty Stout Community College and also to participate in those activities that are set for Sunday. Sunday, yes, a lot of us go to church and do other things with our families, but we can also uh, go to church too. In right. a day, yeah, in a, celebrate in uh, West, End. West End with, you know, I know the entire territory right. can't right. fill there, but they're also, um, right. uh, they'll be live as well, I, I, I guess, for those yes, who cannot that, make that, it that's out. That's a plan, to do to yeah. air the service live, live at the Zion Hill Methodist Church, but definitely uh, going back to 1995, the day he died was Mother's Day, and he was actually in church that same one, that Sunday morning. And then the afternoon is when we heard the sad news. So we want to take it back, back down there. A number of the persons who walked and talked with him are no longer there, mm -hmm. but there are still a few who have tried their best to keep his legacy alive. I would say that the government did declare the holiday in 1999, but it wasn't until 2001 that the celebration began. And it began with a group of community-minded individuals. So on Sunday, we're gonna to pause to pay tribute to two of those individuals who said the government made a decision let's get on with something from a community standpoint so oh, all right so yeah close your mouth so i want to ask you uh, who those two persons are yes, <laughs> <in> <laughs> yes exactly but i you can ask what you're going to answer uh, close <laughs> all right i want to thank you so much for taking some time out to uh join in this conversation make sure that you participate let's have a great holiday season this weekend to come in and on Monday. Thank you so much for joining us for The Big Story. I'm Kathy Richards.
we know that where you choose to bank matters, and it is your vote on what your funds do in strengthening our community. As your official Bank of Paradise, we invest and support the lifeblood of our economy by helping in the realization of personal goals for homeownership, education, and entrepreneurial visions, which support small businesses. We make it our place to connect with persons and worthy causes, and we have been doing so for more than 30 years. Where your money goes and what your dollars empower are your choice. And we thank you for choosing us, a bank that gives where it matters the most, for you, for our community, and a happier tomorrow. The National Bank of the Virgin Islands. Everyone looks to the future, but no one truly knows what the future holds. The number of people under the age of 20 with type 2 diabetes could increase by 49% by 2050. Let it be known that we all have a 30% chance of developing hypertension. Globally, more than 300 million people of all ages suffer from depression. More than 60,000 young adults aged 20 to 39 are diagnosed with cancer each year. Obesity leads to problems such as stroke, heart disease, and kidney failure. No matter your race, age, or color, we are all at risk. These diseases can be managed or prevented if caught early. But with the right medicine and the right doctors to keep us on a path to live a robust and healthy life. We will live well. ways to enjoy life, like so many ways to count on Popular. Plug into Digicel Plus and get even more entertainment with Disney Plus included. The best of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic all in one place. Whenever you want, plug into Plus to enjoy Disney Plus and much more with a home fiber bundle. Sign up today to Sell Plus.